I do want to give a huge thanks to NVIDIA for not only sponsoring this video, but also hosting a giveaway on this custom-built gaming PC from GeForce Garage. To learn how to enter, stay tuned for more info. Ladies and gentlemen, right here in front of me is any gamer's dream setup. We got a dope custom PC built by GeForce Garage that's rocking a 7020X 8-core processor. We also got 16 gigs of RAM and the mighty 1080 Ti Founders Edition. But what I'm really excited about and what you should be excited about is this. The new Acer X27 Predator gaming monitor. This thing has all the bells and whistles any game mode wants. I'm talking 4K resolution, G-Sync HDR, 144Hz refresh rate all on an IPS panel and that is what's got me really interested. I've seen similar specs like these on TN panels but I can't really use those because of the poor color accuracy. As someone who loves gaming and also making a living on content creation, this monitor gives me the best of both worlds. Alright guys, so before we jump into the gaming performance, we're going to try and overclock the CPU. It is using a 7820X 8-core processor, so that usually can hit around 4.5 to 4.6 gigahertz easily. So we're going to try and see how much I can push that. So let's restart the PC and get into BIOS. Alright guys, so we're able to push the CPU to 4.6 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. Um, anything after that, the PC becomes unstable and keeps crashing. So I'm going to lower it back down to 4.6 and I'm going to put the uh, CPU core voltage back to 1.225. I'm also going to set the frequency of the RAM to 3000 megahertz. I'm also going to increase the voltage of the RAM to 1.35 as well. We'll hit F10, save the changes and run some benchmarks. All right, so after the CPU overclock, we got a score of 2007 compared to 1624 on Cinebench R15. That's a 20% gain just by overclocking the CPU. All right, guys, so now it's time to overclock the 1080 Ti to try to get more performance out of it. We are going to be gaming in 4K resolution, so obviously it makes sense to overclock it. Um, so I do have MSI Afterburner opened up. First thing we're going to do is increase the power limit all the way to the max. And down here, we're gonna be basically messing around with the core clock and the memory clock until we hit a stable number. So we're gonna gradually increase the core clock until we hit a stable amount. So usually I try to increase it by 25 megahertz increments. And I run the heaven benchmark in the background to see how stable it is. If it crashes, obviously we have to lower the amount. If it doesn't, then I can go back and slowly increase the amounts. So I'm going to mess around with the core and memory clock until I find a stable frequency and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so we got some impressive numbers off the 1080 Ti. I was able to add an extra 125 megahertz on the core clock and an extra 650 megahertz on the memory clock, all while keeping the GPU between 82 and 83 degrees. So very impressive numbers. More importantly, we want to see the performance difference before and after the overclock. So here is a chart with the full benchmark numbers comparing before and after benchmarking as well as benchmarking with HDR enabled because HDR does in fact impact the GPU performance. Speaking of HDR, let's take a closer look at the X27. Now guys, this is one of the very few gaming monitors out there that not only has a 4K resolution but also 144Hz refresh rate IPS panel and because of these specs, you're gonna pay a premium. On top of that, it does have G-Sync HDR and very accurate color space, making it perfect for gamers who also do professional work. It uses quantum dot technology and has a 384 zone full array direct backlight. It's also got DCI-P3 color gamut, which translates to over 99% sRGB. I mean, this is all around the perfect monitor for me because not only can I game on it, but I can also use it for professional work because of the color accurate display. I no longer need to use two separate monitors, one for gaming and one for productivity. This is pretty much the all in one for me. Design wise, it's not a bad looking monitor. I mean, I'm not a fan of the thicker than average bezels or the aggressive stand, which by the way, has the Predator DNA written all over it. I know it's made for gamers, but personally, I prefer a more minimalistic design. Luckily, it does have a VESA mount option, so I'll be mounting this to my desk. So the stand itself has a lot of adjustability. It can swivel, it can tilt, and of course, it's height adjustable as well. And on the back, you'll find a handle which makes it easy to carry around. 
Also behind the monitor, underneath this cover, you'll find all the ports. You get the usual one display, one HDMI, and four USB 3.0 ports. You can actually use them as pass-through if you use the provided USB pass-through cable. Uh, you get two USB 3 on the side and two more on the back. And of course, it can't be a gaming monitor without LED lighting. Uh, this monitor actually has two points of lighting. You got one going horizontally underneath the base of the monitor, and there's also one on the back. It's not fully RGB, but you do have the option to choose from several different colors, as well as several different effects. Now, the lights don't get that bright, guys, so you can't really notice them during the day. The only time you'll notice it, even if it's at full brightness, is when you're gaming at night. It kind of gives off this nice ambient effect. All right, now let's look at the screen because at the end of the day, that's what matters the most. Once I turned it on, I immediately noticed how vibrant the colors were. Also, because it's an IPS panel, it's got great viewing angles. All right, let's talk gaming. So once I overclocked the screen to 144 hertz through the NVIDIA control panel, things got heated. Combined with the four millisecond response time and G-Sync, everything was smooth. It was night and day coming from my 75 hertz ultra wide back at home. I noticed a huge improvement in my reactions. I was also responding quicker to enemies and overall increased my accuracy in games. Let's take a closer look at the HDR technology inside the monitor. On paper, it's supposed to enhance the viewing experience. It's supposed to give it vibrant colors and lifelike colors as well. So I'm gonna load up some content I'm gonna watch some Netflix videos and play some games and see if there's a real difference between SDR and HDR. All right guys, so I loaded up Black Mirror, my favorite series on Netflix to show you the difference between SDR and HDR. Um, by the way guys, the camera does not do any of this justice. If you really wanna see an experienced HDR, you have to see it in person. This is the best scene that we can find to really show you the difference on camera between SDR on the left and HDR on the right. The first thing you guys can notice is the level of contrast. The colors on the right are more vibrant compared to kind of the washed out colors on the left side. If you guys take a look at his face, you can tell that the shadows are more prominent and the orange is actually more vibrant on him compared to the SDR image. The darker scenes obviously are more darker on HDR and the brighter scenes are more brighter. You guys can tell by just looking at the sky and also the shadows on his jacket. It really does come down to personal preference. If you're someone who likes to watch content uh, that has more contrast and more poppy colors, then HDR is definitely something you're gonna enjoy. All right, so now let's load up some games and see the impact that HDR has on the games. Destiny 2 looks incredible on HDR. The colors definitely look more vibrant with great dynamic range. I can actually see the different colors in the sky compared to SDR. Another thing I noticed is the level of contrast. Once again, the darks are much darker and some colors even look slightly saturated, which gives it that extra lifelike look. When I switched back down to SDR, I immediately noticed the difference in the level of contrast. The colors don't pop out anymore and they seem pretty washed out. Destiny 2 is definitely one of the games you wanna play in HDR. So in conclusion, this is by far the best gaming monitor I have reviewed on the channel, but it's not for everyone. Not only do you need the hardware to take full advantage of this monitor, but you're gonna be paying a pretty penny for it. In order to take advantage of the full 144 Hz refresh rate and play in 4K resolution with maxed out settings, you're gonna need some high-end hardware. I'm talking a multi-GPU setup, at least. And even then, most games aren't optimized for SLI support. So hitting that 144 FPS cap is gonna be really difficult with the current hardware that's available. Otherwise, for those of you who are just looking for the best of the best out there and don't care about the cost, then this is it, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot get anything better than this right now in the market in terms of gaming and productivity. This pretty much has the best of both worlds. All right, guys, now it's time for the giveaway. If you want to enter for a chance to win this badass gaming PC from GeForce Garage, all you have to do is share this video on a social post and let me know in that post what game you would be playing on this PC. Make sure you guys are using the following hashtag on that post and make sure you're tagging NVIDIA GeForce and myself. I do have different handles for different social media accounts, so make sure you guys are using the correct one. I'll post them on the screen as well as in the description section down below. Dropping a like is not required to participate in the giveaway, but it would be highly appreciated. If you guys wanna pick up your very own G-Sync HDR monitor, I'll drop a link to that down below. Also, ASUS made a similar spec monitor with G-Sync HDR, 4K resolution, and a 144 hertz IPS panel. Now, if you guys wanna check that out too, I'll drop a link below as well. 
The winners of the giveaway will be announced on August 31st. Best of luck to whoever enters. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.